Hey everyone, here I am with my Surface Pro 6 and inside my laptop I have, if I can bring it up here, I have a micro SD card which has a 400 gigabyte capacity, specifically the SanDisk Extreme Pro. Now you've kind of caught me at a bad time because I've actually transferred all the files from the SD card to other drives. Uh, I've started using this a little bit, little bit more as well. I'll turn this off just now because, you know, there's no need for me to actually show you that right now. What I want to do is turn the Surface Pro upside down and open up the back. And if I zoom in, you can see the card is there. And you can also see why I've bought the card because down here you can see that the Surface Pro 6 that I have has got 256 gigabytes of storage. You know, when you uh, consider the OS and then all your essential apps, you really don't have too much storage to play around with and if you don't want to use external hard drives and things like that then the micro SD card is the obvious slot this is one of the best ways to expand storage in your Surface Pro and this is how I've increased capacity by a huge amount if I can get it here hopefully this will come in focus you can see it there the SanDisk Extreme Pro 400 gigabytes E2 now, as I noted before, I have been using my T5 a little bit more, but that's not a problem for me because I have many action cameras. I've got three action cameras. I've got a Canon M50 camera that can do 4K as well, not to mention that I can put this card into any mobile phone that I've got in the future. I'm in the Android world and I do like to buy phones with micro SD card slots, so I will get use out of this. Now, I actually bought this three or four months ago. I only paid £65 because it was second hand. I bought it from CEX. But if you are buying this new, you will have to spend a little bit more money. In the UK, it's about £100. Sometimes it's 110 or a little bit more. In the USA, you're talking around $130. On the official website, you can see more information about the card. You can see the full specifications and you can see that SanDisk are really pushing this as a card that can do 4K recording. Here it states that you can do read speeds up to 170 megabytes per second, write speeds up to 90 megabytes per second, and it is available in many different capacities. I've got the 400 gigabyte version, but it is available from 32 gigabytes all the way up to one terabyte. But if you look at the table at the bottom, you can see that the 32 gigabyte card can only do reading up to 100 megabytes per second. Now, the first thing I did with this card was to verify that it was okay because I bought this second hand. It's not something I normally do. Normally, the price difference between new and second hand isn't a lot. So I just buy new. You know, you've got the warranty, etc. But this is an expensive card. I had some vouchers to use at CEX, so I decided to buy it and I saved quite a little bit of money. You know, right now it's £100, but at the time it was about 110 or something. Now, the first thing I did was verify it with H2 Test W because if you buy a fake card, one of the things that they will, you know, kind of mislead you on is capacity. So it might say 400 gigabytes on the card, but it might only be, say, 64 gigabytes. But I ran it through H2 Test W. It verified uh, up to, was it, 375 gigabytes. It was all verified. It, it was all... Uh, verified okay, everything was fine. It gave me a rate speed of 58.3 megabytes per second and a read speed of 66.4. Of course, that is a lot less than what they said on the website. As far as mobile performance goes, I checked this on my Poco phone before. On Android Bench, I was getting a sequential read of 85.71, sequential write of 53.26. With E1 SD Bench, I was getting 86 for reading and 45 for writing, so a little bit less. Now, you know, there's a lot of ways to look at this. Performance is always going to be slower on a mobile phone, but if you compare it to other um, micro SD cards and phones, the performance is actually quite good. Reading wise, it's actually quite good. Writing, it could be a little bit better, but you have to remember that when you're recording 4K, from your mobile phone, the write speeds, you know, they're not going to be as high. So performance, not mind blowing on the mobile phone, but 
pretty good, you know, pretty good for a mobile phone. So I was quite pleased with that. Now, as far as performance on uh, laptops go, I first tested this on my HBook, uh, uh, HP ZBook Studio, not the HBook, HP ZBook Studio, and I used it at the Thunderbolt 3 port with this card reader. Now, this card reader, as you can see here, it's got a Thunderbolt port, and it's got a USB Type A port at the other side. And I tested it on that, and I got 82 megabytes writing and 90, uh, 90 megabytes reading. And that was based on a 1080p video. This is with AGA. And with Crystal Disk Mark, it was 92.35 for reading, 84 for writing. Those are very impressive. Now, you can see there the write speed of 84. That is, you know, nearly up to what they are quoting for the, the write speeds that up to 90 megabytes per second. So I think the, the, the read and write speeds through uh, a card reader such as this, I think that is amazing. I really do think that is very, very impressive. Next, what I did was two tests with my old Faithful Surface Pro 6 here. Now, the first one I did, again, I used this card reader and I got the exact same thing. Despite going through the Type-A port rather than the Thunderbolt or Type-C port, I got 82 and 90 megabytes per second. 82 for writing, 90 for reading. That is through AGA. But for Crystal Disk Mark, the, the values went down a little bit. The reading dropped from 92 to 85, and the writing dropped down from 84 to 74. Still very good. So this is, a, you know, these figures are the Surface Pro with this card reader. And yes, they dropped, which makes sense. You know, going, this going through a Thunderbolt 3 port is going to be better than, you know, going through a, a USB 3.0 Type A port. What I did finally was test it in the Surface Pro itself, and I tested it here in the actual micro SD card slot. And again, I was getting 80 for writing, 90 for reading with AGA, but for Crystal Disk Mark, I generally think that Crystal Disk Mark uh, is a little bit more reliable. And it says that for reading, it was 79.3, writing 77. Now, of course, if you are actually transferring files, uh, there's other things at play there. There's other things at play there. So you probably won't get that if you're actually transferring files. You might be about 40 or 50 or, or whatever. That is to be expected. There's other limitations and there's other bottlenecks that you have to take into account when you're uh, transferring files be between devices. But um, generally speaking, it did work okay. But what I would say is if you are transferring a lot of files from your, your PC to this micro SD card, if you're transferring like 10 or 20 or 30 gigabytes of files, it does take a long time. And that is why I have started gravitating towards this. I've started using the T5 more because this can do over 400 read and write. It's a little bit more consistent. It, you know, the, the speeds don't drop every now and then like this does, which is generally just a, you know, a problem with micro SD, card, uh, micro SD cards in general where you will get you know, certain speeds with the, the testing software, but then when you're actually transferring files, there's other things at play and the speeds drop, but things have been a little bit more consistent with this, which is why I've started using this. But I would say that all in all, I would say this is a very good card. Is it worth 100 pounds? Is it worth 130, $130? Well, you know, it really does depend on what you're using it for. For me, I bought it for the Surface Pro 6, but I knew that if I found an alternative, which I have, then I can use this in many different situations. I can use this with, you know, four or five different cameras I own. I can use it with my mobile phone. But you really do need to justify buying a card like this, in my opinion. If you're going out there and you're shooting a lot of foot footage in a camera, I think this is a good option. If you've got a GoPro and you want to have a lot of footage and perhaps you can't get to a laptop, a computer, and you can't transfer your files, then this is good. It gives you hours and hours and hours of recording. A considerable uh, more um, amount of recording that you would get with, say, a 64 gigabyte card. You've got a lot of stories to play with. Um, if you're putting it in your mobile phone, you could store a lot of videos, you could store a lot of music. For your laptop, Yes, it's, you know, for something like a Surface Pro, because of the limitations of a device like this that only has one USB 3.0 port, if you can put that in there, you've got permanent storage. And it's something that I will continue, you know, to use it with. 
because if I've got video files and I've got other things and I'm on the move, I can put this card in and even if the speeds aren't amazing, I can just let them transfer and then later on transfer it to something else. It's a backup drive, essentially. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this look at the SanDisk Extreme Pro. It is an expensive card, but you get a lot of storage and for a micro SD card, you know, because it isn't fair to compare speeds to something like this. For a micro SD card, I think the speeds, the write and read speeds for this are pretty good. I didn't get anywhere close to what they said I could get for the read speeds of 160 megabytes per second. But whenever you review and whenever you test something like a micro SD card, there's always a lot of things that play. You know, it depends on the device that you're using, depends on whether you're using a card reader and what this card reader is actually going into. Depends on the limitations of your computer as well. But across the board, I think that this has turned out to be quite a good card. Yes, I bought it second hand, but thankfully it turned out to be a good purchase. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I'll speak to you all in the next one. Take care.